I thought we were live the entire time. <laughs> <laughs> Every song is a fucking journey. This is the worst tour I've ever done. <laughs> Anthony Crawford says Gene Simmons is crazy. Black Album was one of the greatest fucking records of all time. Dude, that dude is crazy. Rock and roll ain't dead. Metal was banned. What was the reason why white was banned? Politics and religion. Next record's three chord rock. <laughs> We're gonna do an ACDC record. Um, when we do the next record, take, we, we need to interview the producer and just make sure that they're not gonna invade the Capitol. I'm gonna keep my opinions to myself. Thank you so much! This is why I get banned from tours. Nobody does anything to, to get anyone in trouble. Like, no alcohol is consumed on the bus. Just yoga and prayers. My God. We have Joey Concepcion and Jake Dreyer, two fucking masters of modern shred here on the show today. Bro, Jake, it's good to see you, man. Joey, what's going on, man? Huge congratulations for you, man, on landing one of the best fucking gigs right now, man. That is very well deserved, man. Congratulations, man. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Yeah, dude. Um, it's funny, man. I mean, I think us three were all, we were all in touring around together in 2000, uh, was that 18, I think? I think so, yeah, it was, yeah. Yeah, man, and we just having fucking great backstage hangs and shit like that, fucking yeah. playing guitar, man. I was trying to think today, was it like, uh, was it Savage? Or, no, it was uh, Shaka Messiah, was that who we were listening to? <laughs> trying to figure oh, out yeah, yeah. backstage in Detroit. <laughs> Yeah, I, I've always been obsessed with the first two Shaka Messiah albums. <laughs> Dude, was, yeah, that was always fun, man. I, I just remember really getting, having a lot of like crazy just guitar nerd hangs and stuff like that, man. Yeah. Um, just, well, yeah, man. Um, I mean, I don't know if you want to break down. Let's just break down how you started like getting into music, man, because all the way up to, of course, the Arch Enemy gig, which is just fucking incredible man <laughs> thanks so much bro and you too joseph it's good to see you bro yeah man but, um, something tells me there's going to be sabotage in this story <laughs> i hope so <laughs> but um yeah i mean i started playing guitar when i was 11 and that was like 2002 i was in fifth grade i think like 9 11 happened around then is it just me or are you guys there no, no, we're, we're still here. here. I think it's still here. While you're talking, we're just showing so, yeah. face. And, um, <laughs> yeah, music's in my family. My grandfather played guitar and my father also. But um, I ended up like finding one of my first guitars on the street <laughs> corner, riding my bike. So it started with a, it was like a Honer guitar that had like a built-in speaker. So it was, oh. it was add one string so i brought it to this music store and they they're like oh this isn't really usable so then i got this guitar it was called a hammer slammer it had one pickup and yeah that's like way i learned crazy train and sweet child of mine all that stuff it is it started with like you know guns and roses and metallica and then like i, I liked you know docking and lynch and rat and all that stuff and at the time, like in the early 2000s, you know, like a lot of the metal core and death metal, like on MTV, Headbangers Ball 2 came out and I would see a lot of those bands. And I did first see Arch Enemy there and uh, with that song, We Will Rise. And yeah, I was really impressed by like how rock and roll the guitar solos were at the time because everybody was like doing kind of new metal stuff. But you know, I, I went on and then I like found Ingve and Paul Gilbert. <laughs> and then it was just like Ingve, Paul Gilbert, Steve I. It was just obsession. I had like old school um, you know, uh, guitar for the practicing musician, 80s <laughs> magazines all over my room. And you know, I just had the tapes with the I'm sure you had it too, Jake, with like the VHSs of like, you know. Paul Gilbert and Rock Discipline <laughs> with Petrucci yeah. and Pet 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 Petrucci's yeah. for sure. Rock Discipline, of course, man. And I, I love this the segues on Rock Discipline too, where it was like, 
Gilbert's like rocking out, and then it's like a Reseda like alleyway, you know? Yeah. Uh, or that might be the second one um, he was doing because Rock Discipline was the pink Ibanez, right? And uh, yeah. and he rips that first one. The also one I also really loved to Greg Howe. Um, yeah. The Greg one is um, so he Greg's Greg's not really known for like his alternate picking, but he rips it from that that first solo that he does, you know? Yeah. Um, on that one was just dude the picking technique is so awesome there's these crazy runs and there's that whole thing with the cab driver and they would yeah. have like those like weird yeah comedy segues and shit yeah. dude i had to rent all those that's how much older i am than you guys like the, <laughs> the music store the guitar store near my house uh in utica would rent you those for like five bucks for three days that's you pretty were gonna cool though man any of those in five fucking day did it have the tablature inside of it because i know that the book it had the little book yeah 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 Yeah. i love greg how he's like one of my favorites so like i wish i could more like that (laughs) like he's so outside of the box and his phrasing's just sick did you ever listen to that record how i think it was called how to and yeah yeah, really fucking awesome stuff man but i mean the, the Paul Gilbert one, though, man, those exercises. I remember you and I, we were harmonizing them and stuff like back, yeah. you know, just warming up before because on the road, you know, we're just trying to kill time. Yeah. And, uh, it just good, good, clean, precise picking, you know, and simple runs. And like he, he made it, he should, you know, he started it. And <laughs> we were now we're doing these licks. It's <laughs> same stuff, man. It, it, it's it's cool too, man, because you were just talking about the Arch Enemy stuff. And Arch Enemy always kind of remind me a little bit of like the way they would do the leads was like a Merciful Fate, King Diamond kind of thing, where it was just like they'd have the leads going on. It'd be like verse, chorus, then a lead, then like, you know, there was always guitar solos everywhere, which I thought for during that time, during the Headbangers Ball 2 era was like something super cool, you know? It was it was a little bit different than kind of the other stuff going on. Shadows Fall kind of did a little bit of that though too during that yeah. era. Yeah, them Shadows Fall and like Ali with all their remains and stuff. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Tons, even like soil work and like those kinds of bands. I, I liked a lot of power metal <laughs> growing up too. Stradivarius mm-hmm. stuff like. That. Oh yeah. All the same stuff too, where it's like it's it's a lot of guitar playing, you know. It's a lot yeah. of guitar solos, which is yeah, of course, what we're all about. So, so you, so when you when you went from the Metallica stuff to Guns N' Roses, which is a little bit more the pentatonic stuff, and then getting into like the Ingve type stuff, where it's like the harmonic minor mm. diminished arpeggios, was it like? Uh, an upgrade on like practicing where were you like, okay, I had to like all of a sudden to be able to execute these, you know, runs. I'm going to have yeah. to really like sit down and study this stuff. Or was it always this, were yeah. you always just practicing all the time? Yeah. I like, I would just get home from school and I would have my scale book out and it would be like, like the modes, like diatonic, like, like seven of those patterns and then the mm-hmm. five, tonic shapes and e and like i would just do tons of chromatic for like hours and uh practice between those but when i really discovered harmonic minor i was like stoked because it was like this new like evil sound <laughs> right <laughs> like totally, you know, man. yeah it was like i just really liked how ingve used it in like a cl- neoclassical style so like i got really excited about that and worked really hard on it and uh, yeah, I just like I always like that Phrygian dominant style. Totally, yeah. man. Yeah, I'm, I mean that's where all that that <laughs> it's so funny. It's where the, all that sound kind of comes from too. It's yeah. so it, it's also just like it's kind of the Metallica thing too. You know, Metallica was using that, and then Ingve just did it. You know, with the yeah. major third. You know, I do there. think you need to practice those every day for memory at least like yeah. once a day until it's like burned in your head. And 
even recently, I never like really sat down and knew the melodic minor scale, but like I actually like, taught myself and transcribed it to E and learned melodic minor. <laughs> so, Dude, yeah, like, that's <laughs> it's, it's like, funny, man. It's the same thing. I, I, I there was like one. It was basically just one technique that was kind of just for like economy picking, you know. Um, and but I would, I mean, at least for me, that's I, I would just take like one idea and just kind of run it through all the scales because it was like that was rather than just like running up and down the scales, it was like taking the technique, trying to get like two for one. Um, yeah. yeah, the the melodic minor one, and it's one you don't really hear a lot in in metal, you know. Yeah, you hear a lot in fusion, you know. Yeah. Like with the cow thing, almost. Yeah, exactly. Were you into some fusion guys as well? Like w later on. Yeah, like it started with like Greg Howe, and then like, I, I, like Frank Gambale sweeping is really really cool. Um, um, mostly Greg Howe. Like he stood out. I know like Richie Cotton did some stuff too, and I love all of his stuff. But uh. Yeah, I've I've got tried to get more into that realm. I don't know too much of the like jazz fusion stuff, but I I, I love it tastefully put in metal, you know. Even yeah. when you guys do it like in Witherfall and stuff with the bass and all that. That's all Anthony. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, like you we, we all like, you know, like just put a little little spice of that stuff here and there. Yeah, I mean it's 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 cool, man, because it's like I, I think a lot of some of that stuff comes from um, sort of like the godfathers of spicing those together, you know, like death and atheist and like cynic, you know. Yeah, Where they were. It's clear that a lot of those guys were influenced by Holdsworth and like the the fusion. Yeah, I forgot to mention Holdsworth, of course, like. I luckily did get to meet him once at a NAM show in 2008. And oh, like, wow. And I later got into more of his stuff. Did, he, uh, did you ever see him live? No. But yeah, he, he was so sick. I, I, I liked his uh, VHS tape too. <laughs> from, that one's a wild one, man. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, it was one of those that was like, I, I still don't comprehend any of the stuff that he's he's you know conveying with a it's I mean, holdsworth was just on a whole other uh universe you know yeah, yeah. Wow. I definitely think today with like the the alternate picking like just fast harmonic minor alternate picking like in oh middle, yeah that like was the start of shred and you know getting into all Check. that see sven he got to see Ingve open up for dia Oh yeah, the lock. That was with uh, the guitar player for Dio. Rowan. He was a young dude, right? Uh, yeah, Rowan. 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 Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Awesome man. That's a that's awesome man. That was probably an arena too. That's a good time, man, for music. Yeah. Sure. And Dio playing arenas. <laughs> <laughs> well, Joey, I mean, you guys are playing a, a, arenas coming up, dude. That's fucking sick, dude. That's just so cool, man. That you're doing fucking shred stuff and arenas dude over in europe man so really yeah. congratulations man that is that's awesome yeah i'm really looking forward to the shows and it's gonna be a great time yeah man so, hey zeus says hello joey zeus what's up bro yeah. i was just i was just talking to him uh texting with him <laughs> we're trying to finish up that sanctuary thing and you know you remember Oh, uh, you remember yeah. Germany? Oh yeah, I'm really excited <laughs> to hear them, man. It's been a very oh. long time. I, I remember guys, those, those times. So this guy's asking about the band called Darwin. Yeah, I don't right know that band. band. I don't either. Do you know that, Joey? No. But I, that sounds really cool. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> you, you remember that record that Greg Howe did? He, uh, the, the guy just passed away. He was the uh, keyboard player, Vitali. Oh, yeah. Very neoclassical. Yeah. It was really cool, actually. It's kind of a, a very I underrated. Send or something. I want to say it was like a send or something like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah that was cool. That was like more, it sounded like kind of like a metal fusion almost. <laughs> Exactly, man. Yeah, Greg Howe stuff was was so sick, dude. I took a few lessons with Greg Howe online, and it, he was just—it was just 
the wildest shit that he was. It was just like, you know, basically wow. going over like core progressions, like what you could do, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and it, <laughs> it, it was too much for me. I was just like, I like the hour would pass by and I'd be like, I don't fucking remember. He'd give me like 18 different exercises and I'm like, I don't remember any of this stuff, dude. Dude, that is so sick, man. That must Anna, have been Anna says hello. Uh, she's do you remember her, Jake? She's a guitarist attending a university. Oh yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. If is that you in the photo, Anna or Anna? Uh please comment. Very cool, man. It's a nice well, guitar. Joey, so so <laughs> how, how did how did the uh Argentine gig come come about, man? How how were you able to uh, it, was, it was it was Jeff, which Jeff is fucking amazing, dude. We love Jeff. Yeah, one of both of our favorite guitar players of all time. Yeah. So um, <laughs> yeah, it's like you know, of course, bittersweet in a way because like I wouldn't want Jeff Loomis, you know, playing in any other band right now. But I I know he has some killer stuff, you know, to unleash, and I I think he felt like right time you wanted to you know spend time home for a while and then you know you know go and do some new stuff but um awesome yeah. have right I, right you know. how old is his kid now um maybe six oh now. yeah see yeah. that makes sense yeah because i i remember when you when you first did you did a festival with them um a couple of years ago and I remember watching that. Was just like, dude, Joey's killing it, man. Like, yeah, you fucking had all that stuff nailed. So it's like, that's that's probably such an awesome feeling to like be doing these shows. But then also, you've already popped your cherry, so to speak, with playing with the band. So it's <laughs> like, you're like, it's none of that weirdness of the first yeah. show. Like, you can go do these because you guys have a, like a pretty extensive, uh, very extensive Asian tour coming up. Yeah, that's gonna be a lot of fun. Wow, man! So it's gonna be your first shows, like, uh, like officially on a full tour and stuff with them. Yeah, and you know, have you been least, there, Joey? Um, have you been to Asia? No, not like this part of the world. But I, I did go to Japan once in 2014. Oh. But uh, oh, cool. this is just like all over everything but Japan right now. So it's gonna be cool. It's like about a month or so. Um, like even places like Kuala Lumpur and. Singapore mm -hmm. and Bangkok and um, <laughs> a bunch of China. You can Korea. visit the TikTok headquarters. <laughs> so Joey, Eddie Head wants to know how you ended up in Armageddon. Um, originally, so Christopher Amot, he he was the in, original member of Arch Army, and he moved to the states. And when he he ended up leaving Arch Army, um. They had another player, Nick Cordell, for a while, and then Jeff Loomis. But uh, me and Chris, you know, I started taking lessons with him on Skype in uh, 2013. And uh, he moved to New York, so that was, like, close enough to me in Connecticut. And then, you know, just after a lesson or, or so, you know, we, we became really close friends. And he started Armageddon because it was – it was a project he had like all the way into the nineties. Like they already had a couple albums out and uh, he was looking to restart the band. Uh, it was actually more of like a power metal band before and it had clean vocals. So like uh, we, we found a new singer, a death metal singer. Uh, his name is Matt Hawquist. And uh, yeah, we did two albums together and you know, I like, I got to play so much guitar with Chris and, you know, touring all over the States. We, we went to Japan uh, playing Loud Park with our Enemy also. It was a uh, Slayer and Megadeth headlining. It was an amazing lineup. And then we did like a show opening for our Enemy in Mexico. So that was cool. So, you know, even in the beginning playing with Armageddon, we, we had some shows with our Enemy. It was cool. So I met Michael and Jeff at the time and everybody in the band. So we all were like good friends hanging out, you know, just, it was like pre COVID long before all that. So, you know, things are different now backstage, but <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
Juliana says she loves uh, either you or both of you or all guitarists. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have guitars too. <laughs> we'll take it, man. Um, yeah, that's cool, man. Uh, that yeah. was shit. That was when Jake and I were in fucking White Wizard. You were fucking playing. Yeah, Love Park. I remember yeah, that. Yeah, Love Park, man. Was that when you were over there, 2014? You said you've been in Japan before, so that was that was for it. Yeah, it was. Uh, it was 2014. Yeah, so that's cool, man. So, you, so how did you find out about taking lessons with, uh, with, with Chris? It was over Facebook, actually. Right? Um, did you just kind of like this cold, cold write him, or or was he advertising yeah. it? Yeah, he was advertising it, and um, yeah. uh, I just re- sent him a DM, and then then we had like a Skype lesson. It, it was great, and. Um, yeah, he he just like offered lessons at the time, and uh, I didn't expect anything of it. Of course, you know, I just well, I I uh, had met Michael, his brother, earlier at a few Nam shows ago before that, and like I always wanted to meet Chris. You know, I figured, you know, I'll meet one of my favorite guitar players, learn some Archani songs, and you know, maybe it'll be that. <laughs> and then it's yeah. like it changed my life, and you know, he's one of my favorite players, and one of my best friends and yeah I, I yeah i can't say enough good things about you know all the guys that from our enemy so yeah that's awesome man <laughs> but, <laughs> that's really cool man so you're taking lessons and it it, it blossomed into this man like yeah all the time man yeah yeah and then in the meantime you know like after armageddon uh shortly after um I met Lenny through Zeus, <laughs> and then, you know, me and Joseph, you know, we then we had that tour with Ice Earth in two thousand eight or eighteen. Eighteen, yeah. Jesus, <laughs> that was a while ago. Yeah, yeah, that was a fun run, man. I remember, I remember first first meeting you in person. Um, you and I exchanged some some uh, Facebook messages back and forth. I think right before then, because I think. Uh, you you were scheduled to play guitar with him when Whirl was still alive at that point. Yeah, um, yeah. And yeah, um, not sure. I guess he he was still like in South America at the time. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that was around like November or December of, of twenty seventeen, I guess. And, yeah. Um, that was yeah, a fucking. Then, that was a great tour. I remember. Uh, I remember I met you, Joey, in the that fucking bunker that. That bomb shelter that Sanctuary rehearses at, Fuck. yeah, <laughs> Seattle, that was yeah. madness. I think we had like two rehearsals before that tour or something crazy. Yeah, like it was not a lot. I felt really great, you know, playing those songs every night, you know, because after, before that, I hadn't played in like with metal for a while, <laughs> but uh, right. But the classic metal. Yeah, yeah. So it's like, just all it's all cock and fucking high notes and fucking yeah. leads and dive bombs and I think we gave that band its last hurrah, like at least in the yeah. live uh uh situation. I think I think that was the last really killer uh live stuff that Sanctuary's gonna do. Yeah. I think so. Um don't quote me on that, fuckers. Um <laughs> <laughs> oh, someone said uh, she said for the person who is just starting to play guitar. Um, what about for the person who's just starting to play guitar? All I remember from that tour is Jake fucking waking us up every night when we were trying to sleep. Like yeah. whenever the bus is. Oh, dude! Stop, I... <laughs> we were in the same location. Dryer would fucking stomp onto the bus with fucking wine and start breaking bumps. I remember that was the first night of that tour. We played. Uh, we were in Indiana, I think Indianapolis on that tour, and uh, it was us three and Brent from from Ice Earth, uh, the yeah. drummer, and we were drinking champagne at like four o'clock in the morning on on the bus, you know. And yeah, uh, yeah that was that was a fun run, man. I mean. Um, <laughs> So it, you were also playing with, uh, uh, you were just with, with Jamie Josta, right? 
like yeah that was le leading in be before that um i remember when the first tour i did with him too was it, it might have been might have been 17 as well and, but, and uh, how, how, how did you end up getting that gig um it's a funniest story man <laughs> well like <laughs> Yeah, I ran into him like so many times, you know, living in Connecticut, and like we had, we record a lot at the same studio. And um, when I was delivering Chinese food at this place called the Dumpling House, <laughs> like way back, it's got to be like ten years ago now. But like I, I, I delivered Chinese dumplings to Jamie, like at the studio, <laughs> and like I, I got there with, with, with Zeus there. Yeah, he was. <laughs> Chinese so, dumplings. That's yeah. awesome. <laughs> they are fish dumplings. And um, oh my God. I like came in and hung for a bit. And like they were working on a new seafood album. And, nice. Yeah. yeah. Is that in Connecticut? <laughs> yeah. Okay. It's called, um, well, Zeus also like works out of there sometimes, but this year is owned by Nick Belmore. It's Dexter's Lab Recording. Dexter's Lab. Yes, I've heard of that one before. That's there was one that Zeus was telling us about that was amazing. Out, uh, I, I don't know what to ask him. I, I don't want to go into that. But anyways, um, so you 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 got it because you were a delivery boy, <laughs> pretty much. Yeah, and then you know I I like kept kind of posting stuff, and he noticed. And so Nick, who owns Dexter's Lab, he actually plays drums for Josta. And, um, you know, I was recording with like other bands locally in this studio and he just was like, oh, we, we need somebody to like fill in for a tour. So, uh, yeah, the first tour I did with him was the, it was the Kill Thrax tour with uh, Kill Switch Engage and uh, Anthrax. Wow. I, had, um, I also had uh, Devil's Word, Where's Prada and like Code Orange, something like that. So it was just like, you know, a couple weeks and out in the states and we just had a van and with the trailer old school oh and, really wow so full, full on no bus or anything no <laughs> oh man <laughs> we, we all like i think we all took turns driving and you know it, we were playing like nice you know big theaters too so it was like it was a lot of fun just like going to waffle houses in a van and just <laughs> getting hotels it, it was cool because like then we would play with anthrax and kill switch every night were you guys sleeping in the van or were you, you guys were having hotels every night like mm, it was like hotels every night but a little bit of both like you know we yeah had... it's but, funny wow, man. Man. <laughs> yeah then that's killer and, man and, 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 how, how, okay just I, so orchestra. so uh you went to uh, NGW, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was gonna ask you about that too. I, uh, yeah, it was such a. I went there in two thousand three and two thousand four, and then two thousand eight. So I went three times. Dude, I think we probably. I went there in two thousand eight. We might have. I, I had Terry Sirix class. Yeah, eighties, the eighties one. Um, fuck man, I, there was a one called the Hair Day. Today gone tomorrow or something like yes. that. Yes, dude, that was it, man. I, yeah. It, did did NGW do like um? Was it like because it was a week long class that I, I remember doing? I went there two or three times, um, and so yeah, it might have been even. I think it was actually like twenty six to maybe twenty seven and twenty eight. Um. But uh, yeah, it, it, that that sounds right. It was hair to the egg on the morrow. It was the eighties hair metal class with yeah. with uh, Harry. I remember I worked with, uh, like Dave Martone. You remember Dave yeah. Martone? Yeah, he was really great too. He was a nice guy. Yeah, Harry's amazing too, and his solo albums are really sick. <laughs> his last solo records are fucking amazing. Om, A U M. Yeah, uh, was awesome, man. And then the one that had like machine elves, um, and then he yeah, just did one. Like, I remember when he got his custom shop purple Jackson seven string? The, uh, the soloist, right? 
I think it might have had a Kaler on it. Do Do you remember uh, his Shred is not dead video? Yeah, I had it. It was it was. Yeah. So and then the also purple and green roads. The dude that is what inspired me. The I, I think I it's Harry that. was the one that I wanted to get a guitar from. You know, for Jackson. Yeah. Yeah, man. I think he just put out another album too. I should check it out. He did. It has it has Marco Miniman. Um oh, yeah. Marco did all the drums on it. It's fucking awesome, man. I've, I've listened oh, to yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really great stuff, man. I think it's got. Uh, I think Brian Beller is on bass on it too. Oh yeah, yeah. And he's he played with Steve Vai, I think, right in this Aristocrats. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Yeah. It's got Mohini on a few tracks too. I, I, I think. Um, but yeah, Terry was Terry was awesome, man. I did a lot of private lessons with Terry, or well, over you know Skype. But mm -hmm. I remember the oh. guitar workshop was was right there. So that's really. I remember you and I were talking about that on tour too, man. About Terry. Yeah. And, we're starting yeah. to get behind on questions here. We have uh, Juliana wants to know what inspires you, Joey, to compose music uh <laughs> well it's like it's a mixture of a little of everything you know you could just like it, i feel like it's by experience like i could be going up an escalator and then i'll just be hearing notes like it could be like that or like even with a painting or a picture but usually like i get like a sound that's like a vision and then like i'm i like i know what like guitar part i'm gonna play to that and it's just like you kind of see how the the song is going to be painted, you know, like, you know, this part is going to, you know, be the like more intense one than it cools down or something. And there's like a nice bridge or something. I I have a question. Did you, did you submit anything to Lenny for sanctuary? Cause I never heard any. I did write a bunch of riffs, you know, they're just like a bunch of riffs thrown together and I have stuff. Oh like classic sounding riffs i think so yeah yeah that's what i figured i figured that you sent lenny classic sounding riffs and he wants I'm nothing to do with refuge tonight uh, <laughs> <laughs> i'm really excited to hear that stuff too i um but you're you'll be i mean i don't know if it's announced yet but you, you know with the guitar <laughs> Yeah, yeah, Jake did a couple solos. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, I'm really happy about that because, you know, it, it the, looks... Uh, the, uh, I wasn't allowed to sing any high notes, though. Check it out, the Witherfall wine. I gotta, oh, wow. I have to sing. Yeah, I wish, I, wish I had this. Stuff. Yeah, man. Is this too commercial? I, I don't even know. I'm, like, so fucking disoriented. There you go. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> You guys have a new album coming out next month, right? Yeah. 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 It's not, no guitars on it at all. Like, <laughs> it's all ukulele. Yeah, we, we had Zeus, man. We, we were talking talking about you a lot during that time, man, because Zeus, you know, we, we all had the connection. And Zeus, Zeus was telling us about that story with you and the Hapery guys. And he's like, yeah, man, I met that guy, dude. And he showed up and was like cool with the entire band and he ended up in Jamie's band and I was like oh dude yeah that's awesome man and um yeah are there any like uh Archer to me songs did you know all, all the songs pretty much um like like before going into it I mean obviously you were a fan you talked beforehand about that and especially with Chris Mott's playing but Mm -hmm. Were you pretty really well versed versed with like the actual the, the music and all that kind of stuff before uh, before having to learn it? Yeah, I I listened to them regularly, so yeah, I I did know the songs, you know, from being a yeah. fan. You know, some of the new ones I had brushed up on, but yeah, that's 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 really cool, man. And um, I I, I was talking to uh, I'm. Uh, Chris Broderick was my, was my mentor, you know, for a while. And you guys are gonna be going on the road together as well with Season in Flames now. Yeah, so. that would be really. I'm excited to see him. 
yeah. I, I don't really know him, but I'm excited to meet him. Yeah. I met him once before, like uh, 2009, maybe, or something. Oh, yeah. Okay. Right around like around the Megadeth era. Yeah, he he, he did the Gigantor. Right. And yeah. He played at a casino here in Connecticut, Mohegan Sun. Yeah. Yeah, man. Well, dude, again, man. Uh... <laughs> Anna says, I don't know who is answering me at all. Um, Sven. Too many great rock bands branded hair metal. You know, it's Sven. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but didn't you? Fuck, where do we see you? Were you in Baltimore when when uh, Barlow came out and sang? Uh, I think I think that was that show. That was Baltimore. I don't know if Sven was there. I think Sven was there. I think so. I might be wrong. Uh, well, the singer from Firehouse just died today. You see that? Yeah, yeah. I saw, that's really sad, man. He he was great. I I really liked um, you know, like Al Osco and stuff like that. Man, if we're gonna go this down guy, the fuck, dude, the fucking first record was awesome. Oh yeah, Firehouse was awesome, great. man. <laughs> he he had great pitch and like, I mean, I don't I don't know what it was like to record back in that day, but he was like really spot on. Yeah. Well, you had to do the tapes, you know? Yeah. So like, you, you only had so many tapes, you know? It was the early it. 90s, so, I mean, they were do, using, like, even tides for, like, you could use an even tide on, like, long held out notes, like yeah. the harmonizers, right? Yeah. But the thing is, is that he had such a weird, I don't want to say weird, it, it was such a delicate placement. Right. Like, in the mask that, like... You know, I like I've sung that stuff, and it can go wrong so easily. Like if you if you push too much air, or if you don't have the right like support or or resonance, it just falls apart. Like you see it all the time when you see like Don Dokken now, or yep. or Mark Slaughter, and they're just awful. It's like that's what happens if you don't have the technique down. But that guy was going into his late fifties, still nailing that shit. Yeah, well, there, there were some songs like. Uh, um, what was it? Don't trip me bad. Where the yeah. very end, there was just some high. Oh, that high G sharp. Yeah. Like yeah. That. yeah, yeah, yeah. That guy was great. I'm sad. I love that band. They were amazing live. They sang all the like four part harmonies on like Love of a Lifetime live. Like they were fucking queen. Oh it was wow. Insane. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that was... yeah. Well, rest in peace. Rest in peace. Uh, in peace. Yeah. Jesus. Cool band too, man. I, I I really think they were kind of underrated because they came to more towards the the later part of that like '80s yeah. stuff, which is where some of the best bands were. Winger, dude, Red Beach, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And I think a lot yeah. of that stuff's a little bit more underrated than it should be. Yeah, totally. I mean, Vito Brada too with White Lion. Yeah, I love White Lion. That's some cool solos. Uh oh, my cousin's on the fucking chat here. What's up, Chris? <laughs> Hell hath no Fernie show. Chris, you know Joey, right? I think maybe you Joey. maybe you talked to Joey. We might have we might have drunkenly called Chris Joey when we were on tour. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so, so Joey, do you have, do you have anything like uh, coming up? It's gonna be um, like you your own music, instrumental stuff. I know you were doing a lot of that stuff. You were doing some shows too as well. Yeah. Yeah, I actually did write like a seven string EP and uh it's like probably ninety percent done, like the music and stuff and Oh wow. Yeah, it's it's pretty cool stuff, but you know, I never uh you know did a seven string uh solo album, so I would figure it would be cool. I have the guitar right here, so this this is Whoa. Oh, nice, man. Um, it's a fan fret. This one, wow. it, goes, it goes from like a purple to gold kind of. Oh, yeah. Nice, it's, dude. Oh, yeah. yeah cool one. Is that is that easier to play, Joey? The fan frets? I've never tried one. They say sometimes, but I feel like it's harder. <laughs> like, I'm way used to the normal guitar. 
But yeah, I don't really normally play guitars like this that much, but I wanted to experiment, you know, do something, you know. Mm -hmm. have a yeah. That's a seven Wait, put that in the camera it? again. Oh, yeah. Yeah, odd. I'm going to put you. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. So is wow, that, that's cool, ebony, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. Nice, dude. Oh, I see the purple now. Yeah, I can see the purple. When you go like this, it kind of like. Go, the light. Oh shit, dude! Yeah. It's got a, it's got the truss cover like the fucking bases on the back. Is that walnut? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I <laughs> like that. Oh, dude, that's cool, man. Wow, wow look at that. Yeah. Oh, that's crazy. So, like so it's just, it's just playing, playing the, the fan frets, dude. I, I remember like Rusty Cooley. He had an eight string that had the, the fan frets. You remember Rusty Cooley? Yeah. Like, yeah. I never seen the seven string with it. So is, is it there for like uh this is like an intonation thing though too, right? Yeah. I think like I, I don't know if he, he had like one extra string higher. He maybe. might have had an A string on there for the eight string, you know? It's, so that's like the higher note or I the, think the so. I, I I remember one day, I mean that's that was very cool man, outworld days, you know. Dude, I love the outworld album, man. I burned that hard. Yeah. <laughs> Like it was so good, man. I hope they get to do something again one day. Yeah, I, I, I'm talking with Bobby a lot now. The, the keyboard player is really cool, man. He's yeah, a, um, yeah, yeah. But Bobby Williamson, man. Uh, he gave me my first Prague Power tickets. Bobby like, did. Oh no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm a nice I'm, guy. I'm gonna, yeah, dude. That 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 is an underrated album, man. The yeah. First What's the other band Sega so was in? Jake Umeria. Umeria, oh, yeah. Umeria was, yeah. was also that. I'm gonna tell Bobby about this, dude. I'm gonna introduction too on that first one. Um, and uh, their, their singer man, uh, Kelly Sundown Carpenter, was he played yeah. with a few other bands too, man. And uh, he he was awesome, man. It, it, then found Joseph, you know, that could do it. Yeah. <laughs> but, but Kelly was like up to that point, man. Kelly was was, was the guy I yeah. was like with his vocals. Or yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. What, what what a great ben says band. yes, Jay. He Child was there Bonnie. in Baltimore. Oh, he was there in Baltimore with, with Barlow. Yeah. We yeah. That, one, so. that was yeah. pretty cool seeing Matt Barlow come out. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was that was a lot of fun, man. And, and, and the really fun one too was uh we were able to do that with the Demons and Wizards show in New York at um uh the Best Buy Theater, I think. Um, oh yeah, I don't know what it's called now, but he came out and he did "I Died for You" with Hanzi. That was a cool yeah. one too. Barlow, uh, Barlow, and another vocalist, man, fucking awesome, man. Firehouse yeah. blew up when I was in high school. Yeah, Firehouse yeah. was 91, 90, 91. <laughs> oh yeah. So, uh, so Joey, what what was your favorite of those '80s hair metal? Like Cacophony, Racer X. And oh yeah, yeah. and um, I listened to so many. All I mean, of course, like Shotgun Messiah. Um, <laughs> yeah, and, that's yeah. an obscure one too, man. Yeah. I remember when you told me that. I mean, Sabotage isn't as hair, but I, I I even listened to like Pretty Boy Boy back then and shit. Like, yeah, Crimson um, Glory, Crimson Glory, and Vicious Rumors, stuff like that, and you know, um, yeah, yeah. I remember we were playing Steelheart too on the bus. Oh yeah, Steelheart. I was just gonna say, dude, like uh that one song She's Gone. Like Yeah, dude. yeah. The Les Paul sounds on that shit. Yeah. Fucking sweet yeah. guitar tones. Yeah. Uh, and speaking of eighties guitars, uh, I got this one. Uh, too. <laughs> so I don't really use that one because that's a pretty cool. Oh shit. Wow, look at that one, the man. Fuck? <laughs> what year is that, dude? That's a like an eighty-seven. But uh, wait, wait, show that again. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Oh, look at those single coils. That's awesome. That's sick, I have a PC rig like that. <laughs> really hot guitar. It's it's heavy as fuck. Actually, it's like my heaviest guitar. It's a sandy. Oh, that's awesome though, man. Because that's wow, man. I haven't seen one of those in the yeah. What, what, what nothing anything like that color, but that. Is that a soloist? What's the actual? I, I believe it's a Sandemus Dinky. Yeah. Sandemus, okay, yeah. Wow. And it has these. Dude, slides. that is killer, man. I've never seen a paint job. Yeah, it's a lot more green in person, but it, it's it's like a shocking yellow, so it's pretty cool. 
how's the play? Is it kind of a pain in the ass to keep like? Uh... It sounds really stratty, actually. Uh, it's yeah. kind of, it's tough with the tuning. I did want to like get away to um, upgrade to our original photos as an original licensed. Yeah, jack it's got right, a right, right, yeah. neck. You actually like turn these fine tuners, so it's like you tune it like that, turning it. Right on, yeah. But it's it's not. It feels great. Uh, and I have that one, and then. <laughs> like, um, fucking this light one, the Sharp nice. Five. Oh, it's Charvel, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so more '80s guitars. Yeah. Yeah, I have one more Jackson that unfortunately it didn't have strings on it, so I felt bad bringing it up with that Warrior guitar that I had. Um, oh, bring it out, man. Did they, <laughs> did they send that to you before Prog Power? I think you brought it to yeah. Prog Power. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it doesn't have strings right now, but it looks really great. Um, yeah. I think that chick from uh, that that all female band plays one of those all the time now. It's another one of mine. Is it Cobra uh, Spell or something? Oh, yeah. It's like kind of. Oh, like yeah. That, that's like the one I, 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 I see what around with quite a bit, right? Yeah. So, yeah, I play this one a lot. It's, it's really good for like the rhythm ones. Uh, rhythms. Yeah, yeah. And, and are, what are you guys two to in our Are you guys down? Uh, uh, are you guys C standard? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, the I mean, is, uh, is that a seven? No, it's a six. Yeah. It's an MG, uh, MJ series dinky. So, oh, wow. It's pretty cool. Yeah. And uh, it has the DiMarzio deactivator pickups. Yep, yeah. those are great. Yep. Favorites and. Uh, I yeah. have those in, in this one. This is uh, I mean, that one's got I don't know. I can't even see on here. It's got awesome. the deactivators in that too. That's the problem. Oh yeah. Oh that guitar is beautiful, man. The, yeah, it's got the deactivators in that. And then I don't have any. How long have you been playing that, that, man? Like because you had that in White Wizard. I had that one a while ago, man. I've got uh this one here. Which is Joey? You'll you'll know this one. Oh wow, that guitar is nice, man. That's a really rare one too. That's the '91 Universe UV 770R. Yeah, this one's great, man. This is a fucking awesome guitar. Yeah, dude, that that guitar is that's so rare, man. That's so cool. You have that. I, I that guess, thing yeah. sounds amazing on leads. Like the tone um, is insane. Yeah. I like to use seven string like without using seven string sometimes. It does sound like deeper like when you you know when you play it like a six string. <laughs> Someone has that little extra. Yeah, thing. it does. Are, are you allowed to use seven strings in uh, or, or arch enemy it's all the six? Yeah, it's I, I mean I prefer like six string, but it's it's easy with our tuning, you know, with uh, C standard, so it's just uh two whole steps down from standard E and Oh wow. Thing, uh, 11 to C sharp. Uh, it's a C standard. Oh. Yeah. Yep. And then, then this is a other one that I got here too. It's like the same model. Yeah. J oh, series. That's cool, man. Yeah. It's a blue one. Same pickups, deactivators. Nice, dude. Yeah. So yeah, I'm looking forward to playing this one. This one looks really cool. Yeah, Joey, <laughs> Joey, check this out. I said I, I said I'd show you a couple. This oh is yeah. The, oh, that uh, one. Kelly, this is made in Japan. Oh, it's the professional. Yeah, it's from like '96, I think. Wow. Yeah, it's pretty. It's pretty cool. Um, yeah, it's made in Japan. And then Jake, this is Paul's Les Paul. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah. Look That's at the, nice. Look at the the inlays on it. It's oh, fucking wow. crazy. Yeah. The binding. Yeah. What, what, is that standard? Yeah. 
Yeah, that's awesome. That's a it's great from one. like the late nineties. Yep. Yeah, yeah. And I have that. Uh, I have that. Uh, I think it's a Frank Gambale. Uh, yeah, I remember that one. Ibanez. Ibanez. Yeah. Yeah, but it's yeah. getting it's getting uh, it's getting some intonation work done. But yeah, yeah that, that guitar is from like '88, I think, and it was made in that uh, that weird uh, Christian town in. Uh, in Pennsylvania. Well, I remember those, those, were like the S, those were like the S series, right? Of the Ibanez. I might be wrong, but I think the Frank and Bali were like the S series. Very thin bodies, right? Of the Ibanez. I, I got one of those. <laughs> well, you'd have one of those. No, this nice. one's yeah. weird, man. Like, yeah. they all they only made like, like 50 of them. I found, there's like a Reddit that's dedicated just to that. Guitar. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's yeah. crazy. Like, I had to search and search and search. Like, do, do you guys remember the the Red Beach Ibanezes that were yeah. Yeah. very rare too? I'm gonna grab another guitar real quick. Oh, he's got one. <laughs> he's got one of those. Yeah, yeah. My, my, my collection right now, I have, I have actually, it's a lot of Gibsons and Strats at the moment. <laughs> So Joey's got one coming up here. This is gonna be one of these. This is like a lottery. Oh wow! wow. Oh, that's like, like the Satriani uh, guitars. Yeah, but it's a uh, it's the S series. Yeah. S yeah. series. Wow! The, yeah, yeah. The color was called yeah. lipstick red. And, yeah. Uh, wow, Joe man. Gil. Yeah. Uh, Paul Gilbert oh, and. Oh. <laughs> Oh wow, dude! Oh, here it is better. That is made for sixteenth oh. note. <laughs> yeah, but it is the thinnest neck, man. It is. Look at that neck, dude. Yeah, holy shit. That's that is similar. Like the the Gambale guitar is it has the same neck profile and the same body, but yes, it's, the the body is like a telly. It has a telly, uh, mm. like top fin. That's super cool, man. I got one of these. <laughs> oh, ah. you, got, you got the you got the, the gem, yeah. yeah, in black and green. Yeah, this is one of my, uh, you know, I think this is like my third or fourth guitar that I got. I like that color. So I was like, that, that that's the iconic one, man. <laughs> yeah, I got this guitar for like nine hundred on eBay. Back wow. In yeah. So <laughs> it's like glad I still have this thing, you know, and uh, I'm. I did like most of my playing on this, like, like the wood shedding. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's an awesome one, awesome, man. Yeah. Yeah, the black and green one, man. I remember the universes were like that too. They had a black and green yeah. universe. And I've always been about that with like the, the seven string um, one. Yeah. But. The, that's oh cool, God. the gym. I always wanted the one too. That was like it was. Like the, I think it was a 20th anniversary gym. I might be wrong, but it was the acrylic. I th it was it like kind of like bluish or? Well, or, it was acrylic and it had like a bunch of different colors and stuff going lights. on. I think. Oh yeah, that guitar is really sick, man. That was. You can turn the light on, and it was green. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Joey, Sven says he met you. And he gave you sweaty weed in Maryland, and he's sorry. <laughs> I think that I remember you, Sven. That you could see you here again, man. You can't, <laughs> you can't in Maryland, yeah, yeah. Okay, at, at that show, yeah, because Sven was there whenever. Uh, Is that when I was like? Was yeah, was that that was that one in Baltimore. <laughs> yeah, what a cute guitar! Which guitar is cute, uh, Juliana? Let's see, here. Let's see which guitar was cute, okay? Um, I don't know what that says. My Spanish sucks for reading. I want the guitar something I can't something. Uh, <laughs> tell me how off I am. Oh, hey, thank you. Anna says it's perfect to work on what you like in the house. I don't even know what that could mean. Um, Thank you for responding. <laughs> I oh, am cool. 
very thankful. Yes. All right, man. Well, Joey, uh, it's, it's been an hour, man. Um, I'm going to log off here, man. Uh, Joey, yeah. Congratulations, dude, on, on, on the gig, dude. That is fucking incredible, man. Really happy you got it. And, uh, Hold up. Let's dude, get these last questions in. And yeah, then, uh, yeah, we'll lock off. But dude, you, you completely deserve it, man. And it's been Joey, awesome, I'm gonna man. I'm gonna send you my phone number uh, when I get off of here. Let's let's talk. Okay. <laughs> I'll tell you some stories. Some I'm stuff you missed. So yeah, yeah. If, if if anybody's got any more. Uh, oh yeah, I guitar could have been in Wayne's I, world. Wayne yeah. for one Halloween. Not gonna lie. Yeah, there's know. there's some crazy shit on here, man. There's like a hundred. Questions, but they're all in Spanish. Um, <laughs> or, <laughs> Anna saying, wonderful collection of guitars. Oh, no dude. fucking way. <laughs> Hold up. <laughs> no fucking up, way. Man. No way. Dude. <laughs> no, I, 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 I've, actually, I've got the Wayne's World guitar right here. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> Who wrote Wayne's this- World? <laughs> oh, Jake's got... Wait, was the Wayne's World a white or a oh. black strat? Which one? Oh, a Fender 69 strat with triple C single coil pickups and a whammy ball. <laughs> <laughs> Which one was it? Was it white or uh, or black? Uh, when monkeys fly out my butt. It was a white strat. White strat, okay. Yeah. Yeah. It was like it was a, a white. Yeah. He, he used that. It was like a 60s strat. And then, yeah. There was like a lot of friends. Congrats, like, Joey. Awesome. So, yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. Last questions for Joey, Jake, or myself before I finish this bottle of Witherfall wine and sink into oblivion. Um, good Lord. Of course, thank you guys for having me on. Uh, no, dude, gonna... thank you for coming <laughs> on. Dude, absolutely, man. Th- th- thanks for joining us, man. And uh, we'll definitely see each other on the road. And uh, looking forward to hanging out. And uh, had a great time. Are you yeah, guys? Hitting, you're hitting North America, right? Um, not nothing right yet, but um, I'm sure you know. Yeah. Well, well for, for for sure, he'll probably hit the bad means. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But. Um, uh, Last yeah, questions. Joey, uh, again, man, super congratulations, man. What an awesome gig, dude, that, uh, <laughs> that you oh. got, man. And, uh, and, and very well deserved, man. Awesome player, man. So that's. Yeah. 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 Joey, Fucking... I always loved your playing. Um, Eddie Head says, looking forward to hearing you on the next Arch Enemy record. Well, there you go. Yeah, dude. Let's let's uh let's see that what are they are they working on anything or can you even say you nothing right now but just you know, okay we, yeah the 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 latest album Deceivers came out like you know, about a year or so ago so it's right. fresh and so got some extensive dates coming up. Yeah. That's killer, what? man. Being out on the road, man, and, and with a with a, a band like that too, a great band. You're gonna yeah. have awesome production, all that kind of yeah. shit, dude. That's fucking awesome, man. You know? Yeah. We got one last question here from Juliana. Joey, what is your favorite song of the moment? Um don't say Taylor Swift or Beyonce. Uh, box air on the G string. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh really? I just saying that because right now, but <laughs> hey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, hold hold on, guys. I'm gonna play us out, and then uh, be right back. Sometimes the world no longer needs a hero. Sometimes what it needs is a monster. Sometimes the world no longer needs a hero. Sometimes what it needs is a monster.